Shukwaya Yata. Yakoi Gwashi Satin. Das sei zu was ago adat you khakhtula api op slinket Das sei zu was ago adat you khakhtula api let khakht enach Je wa shukwa ya wash adat Ajawe yata, kwashukwa aya yata, skagartu ak. Dasa yi tu wasiku, a datu kagartu la adi, ngit genach. A eti a dasa yi tu wasiku, a datu kagartu la adi, glad kak enach. Was glad kak enach? Grammar, kacha asa, jadasa, a. Singit kusti, singit yu khatangi daat, shukwa ko a singit khenach. Yewe akhtu wasaku, kagakhtu aku, khusaku wan kanins, just late ka, yu khatangi ayayi la yehi, chayeku kenke ayat ih, kuk, singit la yeh, kuk. Yewe, yewe akhtundu tanitsu. Ya Maran Headlands ye hat wutien Nas gen kat ye gi anach just kach hit ka singit aya kwa ach just we du achji at ten kwa has du redach kachwa ach kach shahidi ye kutak ka ye skasnik Achietki ka achet koa, ach nak has wukuch, na kide, ya organ a de has wukuch. Jayeku genki achet wut le tish weg, jes ach kach shahiti, ach katish hiti at tin, kawe at yahai, a dada ye jahwane. Wan kanins koa, jakut kajin kajako aya has inuk ach de tan. Das Gleit Kach in Achko. Jewe Kleikigi Aya We hit Gleit Kach in Ach Hastel Je du Sago at Aya Nach Aya Chogut. Hosatin Koa We Se Ati Kug Jewe Du Jiu At At Du Yai At Owe We Hin to nach adi tin, kut nach owe. Hin tin a kach aya kawa a. Du daat aya khwasatin. Shaj yachyati. Khadri yati yachyati at. Was yao yadki hechwasaku usk. Daan a yachyati at. Khad qa'a. Yeh wa jiyan, ha. Shu owa awa steh. Yeh wa San Francisco, eil hini. Adi steh eke, yuk. Yeh wa jiyan. Aqa awa qone khwa satin, shta khat yeh awa wa shaj. Ha. Wasa atta ne. Adat yu ta khwa tan. Yes, the cut we hana. Shach yach yati a. Glaid yach has yati a kwa. Gwall eagret ye du a saga a glaid kach inach. Daak de has wu qeen. Has wu da qeen. Aqa as. As yuk de we has wu ja qaq nuj. Has du gheed ach ege. We shaj. Gwane a daad aya yuch a gach. Kau tut la aad. Kau dach sa we. Gwal weiz aad zi. Kleich kai aya. Ye awe. 
San Francisco Konachik E. Ani Yuhan Ko Adasa Adasa Dan His exam Yacheti, His Yi Data Yak was all like Okay, so we'll keep trying. My, one of my goals is to just start in Tlingit, and maybe we'll make a list of things we'd like to talk about in Tlingit. And I think it'd be easier to sort of make the list now, and then we pick one, and y'all go work on it, and then when we come back, 
we just try and maybe we pick three or four, let's pick four things, four is a good number. Then we'll try and talk about those particular things. And then we'll spend some time in English just talking about whatever we feel like we need to. Hey, let's work on this concept. Hey, let's review this concept. That's how I think uh, an advanced class should go. So, um, anybody catch, anybody need help, like, translating the stuff that uh, I just said? Okay. It's the two of you. So, let's walk through it. Where did it... What did we do at first? How did it start? From Marin Highlands. Yeah, it's in the, the Marin Headlands, I guess. Hasha'ani. I don't know. I just said Marin Headlands. That's what it's called. <laughs> Anybody catch anything else? Salt water involved. Yeah, there was some salt water. Yeah, down in the, right, the bays. It's kind of looking... I guess northwest, because you can't see the Golden Gate Bridge really from there, so you're looking kind of, I guess just west, I don't know. And then, uh, yeah, so it was like an artist gathering that was there. Raven in the mix. Let's see. I did see her. I did see, well, there was one, I didn't really say Raven, but there was one day where I saw a coyote, a raven, a spider, and a raccoon all in the same day. I was like, <laughs> let's go, tricksters. Let's. I don't know what's happening, but I guess I shouldn't say let's go because I'm not challenging you. Um, but yeah, so there was like an artist gathering. Uh, I was there for 30 days. Uh, I was kind of, I went, I was working on art projects, drawing, writing, uh, listening to, you know, translating Clinkit. Someone told me the verb for translate. I always forget it. I have to dig that back up. Uh, but then uh, my wife and kids left. It was kind of lonely. Uh, there were other artists that I would visit with and we would eat together. At one time I was walking past this hostel and uh, someone was spraying out a cooler and then I saw all these little fish on the ground. They looked like little smelt or what do you call those? shot. I think that's like a little, um, almost like a little sardine. And, uh, and I thought, oh, they must have been fishing, because that's why people have coolers and little fish, right? That's, <laughs> but then I thought, do they, they got a fish here, right? I mean, there's the ocean, but it's not like I saw like big fleets of fishing boats or anything. I'm sure they're around. But then, uh, you know, I didn't think, then it was just like, whatever, they were fishing, that's what it was. And so then I kept walking, but then I noticed these little fish were all over the place. And I was wondering about it, because we were about a mile from the salt water. And then I was... I was thinking they had these birds that they called herons or called egrets. They were they look like a heron, but they're white with a yellow, really yellow beak. And they're, they're maybe a little bit smaller than like the chach that we would see up here. And every evening they would come up and like land in the trees, which was and they're a pretty big bird. I was like, well, it's a pretty big tree. I was like, huh. And I thought maybe they brought them up, just like threw them around for some reason. And so we were all kind of talking about where these might have come from. And then uh, we had a dinner a couple days later. And uh, the, the executive director there, she stood up and she said, maybe you guys have seen some of these fish all over the place. I thought maybe I was losing my mind. Uh, and I thought maybe the birds brought them here. I was like, yeah, maybe. And then she said, well, this gentleman's going to tell you uh, about it. He might know why. And so then he stood up to talk, and I hadn't seen him before. And uh, he started talking, and uh, I'd been living in this sort of English and clinket only world. I'm, I'm sure there were other languages around. I mean, I went to parts of town where people were speaking 
Spanish, but I guess I didn't pay close attention. And uh, he was about five or ten seconds in, and I remember just staring at him thinking, why don't I understand? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, he's speaking a different language. Okay. And then he got done, he said, well, that's the Miwok language. And I was really excited because uh, there was kind of this culture of invisibility there, I felt, uh, when it comes to indigenous peoples. Uh, we had a ceremony one time out at Stanford, and there was some Miwok people and some other, I can't remember the name of the other tribe there, but they came and talked to us and spoke some of their language. Uh, but then I started thinking, I was like, I can't see for sure if I saw another native person, maybe, you know, I don't want to assume in that part of, you know, the country. And uh, anyway, so then he got done and he said, he said, you know, my people are from here, my family's from here, I'm a tribal member with this, you know, tribe here, and uh, we're working with the headlands to see what we can do for the future of this place. And he was telling us about the land, and he said, you know, you may not see very many of us around, he said, but there was a time when they were hunting us down and trying to kill us off. And so we would hide and we would tell people that we were Mexican or we were white people. And I was like, oh, wow, you know. And then, uh, and then he was telling us the names of the place names of some of the areas nearby. And it was really just amazing. And then he said, you know, his grandpa had grown up in that area. And one time when he was, his grandpa was telling him a story that when his grandpa was in his 20s, one time he saw this thing where the, the, the water got sucked up from the ocean really fast into a cloud. And it sucked these little fish up, and then it rained these little fish. And I was so fascinated by that. And at one time I think I had mentioned to people that, like, I've heard it has, it's rained frogs before somewhere. I saw it in a movie once, and I looked it up on the internet. And so we didn't see it rain, these little fish, but then it's kind of fun to think about how to say that. And then it's also kind of fun to think that we, we were there and we, we didn't see it happen, but we saw it right afterwards. And maybe it only happens every 50 years or so. So that was kind of fun. That was just something I was uh, thinking about and then thinking about how I would talk about, right? It's just something that happened to me. It's just something that I saw. Uh, there's lots of other things that we could, uh, talk about, but, and whenever we share language, sometimes we're going to construct just a little story from our life, just a little thing, because I, I guess when we start moving from into this advanced level of clinket, we just think we want to be communicators. That's all we want to do. We just want to be communicators. And so sometimes we got to think about all the grammar stuff and the ins and the outs and all this other thing, but sometimes we just got to say, forget all that. Let, let's just talk. And so I'm going to encourage us to figure out these things that we would like to just share with each other. And so as we come up with ideas, it could be, uh, what did you do over the weekend? Or it could be, uh, let's talk about where we grew up. Or let's talk, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. And I'm not trying to be um, invasive, but just trying to say, what kinds of things do you enjoy talking about it? About? And let's figure out how to talk about those things. So that's one of the goals with sort of, uh, for me this semester, so that we'll, we'll just start the class in Tlingit and definitely uh, have a notebook or something so you could just keep notes so that, you know, we don't have to say, you know, what's shock? You know, we just figure it out later, right? And it might be annoying, but I think if you can, if we put ourselves in that situation, then we don't have that sort of, we don't have the English exit ramp on the clinker freeway all the time, like next exits in 43 miles, right, you know, so so then we could start, and our brain will sort of, it'll get used to that, it'll, I think it'll take a while, but it'll get used to that, and then also like as we try to sort of share things, sometimes we might sort of say stuff and and we just don't understand each other, that'll be fine, but we'll have sort of a framework, we'll have some ideas on how to get going, and maybe what you share will be really short, that's totally fine, because then we could just sort of find things to just kind of um, bounce off of. And then we can develop some sort of, some things. Like if we keep talking about the same thing and somebody's sick of it, then we'll have a nice, come up with a nice way to say, 
Let's talk about something else, right? Um, anyways, anybody got any thoughts on any of that stuff? Raining fish, mass structure. How do you, so I saw the like CU doc, but I mean, what? How would you say rain fish? I would say like shach. I think was that the name of that little fish? Shach doc was a ton. Douche doc was a ton. And so because the dock was a ton just means it's precipitating. And then you see you is rain. Uh, if you're in Tesla, it's seam. Kadats uh, is hail. Glate is snow. Gladietki is fine snow. Kasechja is fine rain. And those can all just be dock was a ton, dock was a ton. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Thoughts? <laughs> And I was like, I know that word. Yeah, right. A little, a little fish, a little something. Do you online have something? Uh, uh. Um, so I've got something just little to say, but then I have a, a question because I have trouble with it. Um, so, Yatauk Ite, Yatauk Ite, Kunach Kusi Art. Aga away ya kutan klech sim dok hustan. Um, at away we klech klech has kawu a wake anat a we hichli we ya hachli. Um, klech has kawu a at away we speak klach kunach has to eat yon uaha. Uh, you dat share the hands eek on kach ya has na adi at haga has kushi ishan uh, ishan seek. So um, I have trouble figuring out uh, if I've got two clauses, I have trouble figuring out which one is the relative clause, which one has the relative ending. Like a uh, if I say uh, you dat share the hen seek on kach ya has na adi at haga has kushi, or I don't know if it would be you dat share the hen seek on kach ya has na at um, at haga has kushi. <laughs> I don't know how to uh, figure out that stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. Uh... I think for, for that particular one, it's probably easiest to just straight sequence them. So I'd say, It's just two kind of, there's no, you could, they're, they're sort of joined by more or less a comma. Um, the one way, if you wanted to push that together, then you would probably say, Ya dehe needs eek on kach. It should be kach, I think, if we're going to have it, because they're, they're doing it repeatedly. On kach has na atch. Atcha ka has kuwashi ye. Because then that's doing a little bit of like, they've come on the land to do this thing. But those ones, in my experience, they work better if it's like, it's this because of that sort of a thing. Like, it's good that I have seen you. It's thank, I'm thankful that I have seen you. So where you're really pushing the, the cause and effect together, whereas Something like a, a little, you know, in those stories, uh, Acha Way would work just as well. And, and I think is a little bit more straightforward because um, it, would, it would be more like, An Hastitu Yeyeti Aswushahu. They were angry that they were starving. And so you're, you're really sort of pushing these things together a little bit more by making them relative clauses. So it's like, it wouldn't be this if it wasn't for that type of thing. 
but it's it's good to practice them but I find uh, they're used a little bit more like I feel this way because of that thing right so like some kind of feeling and then some kind of reason for that feeling and that's usually a pretty good starting point you know I was sad that they left me right and so uh, that might be something to just sort of think about and then just keep going back into the stories and find examples of when they do that because it could also get it could get a little tricky because you could say you could say that too which was it's sort of another way to say like second one gets conjugated in a way like they did the first verb so that they could do the second verb right and so um, and that's one where you, you'll hear the ka conjugation in the in in there uh, the rest will be kind of straightforward like almost like an imperfective with the ka thrown in and then a t on the end and so you might say like good uh, shaki dehwa good Hit was a teen. Hit. Ooh. Hit. Custined. Maybe. I'd have to check. That's when we're like, uh, uh, Sam would be really good to check with that. You know, Anyashahash or Keyishi, where we're getting some of those. Like, I did this so that this would, so that this could happen. Um, that's getting into a little bit more of a complex sort of field. But for now, like when you're doing like they did this and then, you know, just a because of or a qa away, uh, it's, a, it's a good place to start. Um, because otherwise, you know, you could say uh, they were hungry uh, because there were no berries. And, and even that, like I would probably just say, we take a away. And so the berries aren't coming up because Clinkett likes to put the most important information in the front. And it's like the berries aren't coming up. So it's like you're sequencing all this information. Like it was cold and then it was, uh, it wasn't, there was no rain and then the berries didn't come up. You could also say, um, I think you say, uh, the because we went hiking, uh, we were hunting, and I didn't bring a water bottle. I was going up this hill. I was like, I'll just grab some berries. And I, and the berries were not, they were dry. And so, kashlahin would be like, it's juicy inside. So, kashka was It was, it was, I expected it to be, but it was not. Um, it was dry. And so, that's kind of, yeah, that's what I would sort of start thinking about with that. Okay, good Good afternoon. Ah. For sequencing in kind of in time, you mentioned, um, I think, clay as kind of then. Yeah. So the, the clay, um, it's like when, we, when we're sort of putting things in, in an order, and sort of talking about things happening. Tle uh, would be like, um, then this thing happened, right? So when you start using tle and tle, uh, and you'll see storytellers using tle multiple times in the same sentence, what you're really doing is you're, you're pushing these things together. Like if we're telling the story um, about this bear that came into the yard. It's like, and then this happened, then this happened. And this, that's when you start using the tle, is when you're talking about all these things that were sort of running into each other, uh, especially if they're happening sort of at the same time. Because uh, aqa is just more of a straight, and then this thing happened. But tle is more like, while this thing was happening, this other, th you know, while he was doing this, he was doing that other thing. Or while, when this thing happened, when this thing happened, this other thing happened, kind of a thing. And so it's sort of pushing it together, not even, not just with time, but also with sort of consequence. Like these things were 
were just logically related kind of things. Um, because there's another one uh, that you don't see very much, but you could say um, kiknach would be another thing that you could put in between two verbs. And that would be just really like he was, what do you do? You pat your head, pat your belly and rub your head. I get, I get him backwards. But you were doing, he was walking and whistling. He was, you know, doing these things. And then the, the kiknach would mean doing these things simultaneously. Yeah, at the same time. Whereas kle is more like you are doing the sequencing, but you're really talking about like it's getting pretty important that we say uh, there was this, then this, then this. And there's another short one, um, sa, which means only when this thing happened could the next thing happen, right? Sadana dojito wotiyi de wugud. It was only when he, she gave him money, however we want to do the pronouns, that he went to the store. And so what you'll find with Shingit too is it has these little particles that do the work of a lot of little words in English. So when you translate it, you'll have a whole bunch of these little words like the because of and, and all this other stuff where Shingit can do something, it can kind of shortcut some of that stuff. Um, but it makes up for it sometimes in complexity. Other thoughts? What kinds of things do you guys want to, or any thoughts on that kind of stuff that we just talked about? Should we wrap that up? What kinds of things do you guys want to talk about when we get together? How about food? Things we like to eat. Professional sports. Like, <laughs> we can, you know, a little bit here and there. Must be for everybody. No. <laughs> 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 what else? Travel, how about going places, seeing things? Like the other day, I was walking my dog, or you know, like I was thinking, like, um, you know, my dog was swimming, it was the first time she swam up to her neck, and I was trying to think, oh, oh wow, how would I talk about that? How would I talk about like throwing a ball versus throwing a stick? So, that kind of stuff, I think, would kind of stretch your brain to, yeah, look for different not only vocabulary, but also, you know, there's kind of two creatures in the in the equation that you don't talk about. Right. So let, let's say, let's just try and like, uh, oh, let's see, getting food. And we'll try a little exercise here. Food gathering, uh, berries, hunting, uh, this time of year, yeah. Fishing. <laughs> Fishing. Um, you know, and, and then there's the cutting, the cleaning. There's a bunch of different stuff we can get into there as well skinning a deer. If you had a deer and a seal and you were going to skin them, those are two different verbs. Let me mute myself. Go ahead, Cook. Along this, on like day-to-day -day stories, I think um, talking to someone about like you know, after you've worked all day, like what did you do at work, or mm -hmm. um, you know, what did you do today, kind of things. You know, right. that little like that you might have with a spouse or a roommate. You know, at the end of the day, debrief kind mm -hmm. of. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, here's sort of a. Okay, so the other day. Uh, the other day we went out to this little cove and we saw these people in go out in kayaks 
and a paddle board and they went out and around this little island it was kind of not too far but their dogs swam behind them and then they you know when they came out I was like oh their dogs were behind them the whole time and then the dogs came out of the water and they're like let's play I was like what seriously I'd be so tired you know but um and so just yeah little things like that right around the island the dogs swam we're in a little cove the other day so just sort of thinking about how to sort of put mm -hmm. these things in order um, are we recording the class? Ah. Uh. Yeah, so we record these classes uh, and we post them. Uh, we could certainly, uh, if there were specific discussions that we wanted to have, we can pause the recording. We could have uh, some classes where we didn't record. Um, if, you know, if, if we wanted to get into some of these sort of uh, deep conversations as well about the language environments, anything like that, we, we have those options where we can have an executive session and just sort of talk some stuff out. Or maybe that's our business and that's not other people's business. We want to have a, it, it's sort of we're in this area where we want to have a safe space to learn. But we also should recognize that there's not there's certain people who maybe can't make it here, and we want to make it available for them. That's that's sort of my goal, and then also testing. testing. Oh, no. Sorry, Sorry. Jody uh, Um I couldn't figure out how to get online, so I went to see Cassie. And they're both of us in the same room. <laughs> She's gonna sit on her speaker. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to tell stories to my two-year-old grandson. And I've sort of tried to translate the three bears. And um, I'd like to use traditional stories like yours with and Sikidi. He really loved that. And I'd like to work on stuff like that. Something that you can have a long speech and it's entertaining and it's educational to little kids. And you can have a picture that helps them with context and comprehension and you can both learn. Anyway. Okay, gonna cheese. Uh, yeah, hopefully we're not getting stuck in too many feedback loops. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a pretty good one. It sounded like a stadium for a second, which was really fun. Uh, but yeah, we can certainly, we can, uh, we can ask her to share some of the, uh, illustrated books that she's made. I have two that I've started with, uh, with George Davis and Marge Dutson. Uh, the text is pretty much finished. I might, I have some drawings, but I might redo some of the drawings and we can also talk about how do we just, how do we make more of this stuff? How do we make it easier to just get this stuff out the door as well uh, because that's what I found in that's one thing they did talk about in Hawaii is they had a hard time because they'd start making stuff and people say you're doing it wrong you do it and so they would just sort of shut it down but then they just they just said we're, we'll just do it and we'll just we'll fix it later if we have to we do these low runs because it's not like there's there's not 10,000 clinking speakers yet so we don't have to make 10,000 copies but we can make a hundred and then, or we make 50, whatever, because there's lots of options right now. They kind of consolidated all their efforts and they made this publishing house for Hawaiian language materials, which I think is something we should also explore so that we could have someone on staff who can proofread really fast and just fix things. And then we have uh, a graphic designer, an illustrator, and we get all that stuff and we can just crank this stuff out and we don't have to worry about the English-speaking world. They're fine, right? We need, we need clinket materials, and I, I definitely recognize that for readers for all different levels, because we did some, too, where we translated these things, and, and they're really complicated, and so, and I think that's fine, uh, but then also we got to figure out how to get these things out there and make them available. So I'll share several more things throughout this semester, uh, and I'll I'll make them available as drafts. So you can at least have an electronic version of it. 
if, but then we can strategize too when we're in our English time about how do we get this stuff, how do we get it out the door, you know, um, so we can have printed copies. There's a whole set of coloring books that were you know, from made in Yakutat, uh, and they've got, there's a whole series, I could bring those in and show them to you, and maybe we can figure out how to incorporate those as well, because we got to develop some really some good early childhood stuff, and um, I'll show you guys some other stuff that I've been working on, some um, early childhood curriculums that you're teaching, reading and writing, and I saw this really neat sort of thing. Let me see if I can just show you guys uh, while I'm talking. I don't know if I can kick knock this thing though. Uh, but I saw I sat in on some classes, a lot of classes in Hawaii, and when we could speak a little bit of Hawaiian, it was a totally different experience because we got to see, you know, kind of what was actually going on. Uh, and so one of the things that they did have was this really neat uh, process. And so, uh, for example, you'd have something like this, and they had a handout that was similar to this. Let me hide this thing. And so you would have, uh, the idea is they would write their name here, and there's other handouts before this where they're just practicing making the letters. Uh, I think I changed the font to a similar, it's more similar to handwriting, uh, but could still accept some of the underlines and stuff. And then they could write uh, the month, the day, and the year. And then there's a, a, a couple of different things here. As, as one is we sort of talk to them about the word, and then they're looking at this image, uh, and we've got kind of a, a photo, and then also like a cartoon kind of a thing. And then they draw a picture of it. And while they're drawing a picture of it, I'm not just saying it's a gaydi, but I'm starting to describe this thing. Where does it live? What does it eat? What does it do? What does it look like? What's, what's its behavior? What do I need to know about it? What's cultural information about this thing? Who claims this? Lots of clans claim this, right? So there's lots of things we can do as, and we're just describing all this stuff. And, uh, and then they spell it, and then we can sort of move along. And then I, one thing I really liked is they, they, they live on islands in Hawaii, right? So they've got deep water, shallow water, beach, lowlands, highlands, up by the mountain, and in the mountaintop. We have a really similar landscape. And so what they did is they would start on the mountaintop and they'd say, who lives here? And they would just talk about these different animals, right? And so we did this, I think, last semester, maybe we did it once. And we, we could just sort of go through these and we could, do an, we could do an exercise like this in fully in Tlingit, where we sort of start with a, um, let me see where I put that. We could start with this, these sort of, these ecosystems, right? And we could talk about it in, in Tlingit. It's, um, and so we kind of made this, thing to go with it uh, and so we would have these different sort of areas and we would talk about who lives here and we start with the animals and then we could also say you know atkatu adi at you know we could start to sort of come up with these also categories for things dasahas uchaich what do they eat uh, and then you can get that that will lead you inevitably to the plants and you can talk about the plants that grow there which ones can we eat which ones are medicine what do we know and, and you can just move through all these different sort of zones and it's kind of fun to push ourselves to because there's a lot of cultural knowledge that we might have but can we convey that with our language skills and if not can we build those skills up so that we so that we can okay do you think your retention of a word is better if you don't start off? Like I see that you're never saying like beaver. This is the clinket word for beaver. Mm -hmm. Do you think your retention is better if you're just starting with the clinket word, like for little kids? I think so. Um, be, because then they're sort of, I've been trying to push for like just a direct association with that particular thing. So when they see that thing in the world, 
because then you don't need English to be this medium language. You could just sort of push for it to, and I find if you don't say it, they'll, they'll figure it out, they'll get it. Um, and I think our challenge is to do that with ourselves as well, right, which is, it's hard. It's hard to do that, to just sort of push ourselves into that, but I think we can. Just utilizing the wide variety of tools that we have. Uh, although I found sometimes if my kids don't know what it is, and I don't want to tell them in English, sometimes it's a challenge, right? Like, I want to tell them I saw a raccoon. Well, like, a raccoon's really not an English word. I think it comes from a different indigenous language. Uh, but then, and so I'm fine saying raccoon. Um, but then there's, there's other things too, like where it's, you know, we're, we're driving What's that do a saga? Swimming pool. Oh, with their mommies and their daddies. <laughs> ah. <laughs> like, just to cut, to, yes, ah, yeah. Just to cut the heart. As to to us a goo. We nadai he naki de hasu wuk. Ah, away. Hasa wuk. Ah, away. Huska kwana. Has a has cowdick eat. A car talk eat, take a has to yet key, or neke has to what? Tesh has just has to eat car, has to talk, tesh has in car. A red key, a red year car. Okay, yes, but you know, to, to push yourself to try, and there's probably gonna be lots of mistakes and other things, but can you convey the concept? Um, ach, kik, uh, do see Sydney, um, play do shu, uh, do katagu, um, wushi ekuk sahani gashat, um, and, uh, she made me a kuyao dahagi, and it, uh, ak to asugu. Eh, Like many, so she's, uh, Half Alaska native, and she learned um, plague. Ah, uh, um, she could sing like a good chunk of that song from the little video, and she loved the zombie puppets. Oh yeah! And several, I've showed several of the of the things from this class, and she ate it up, and she just remembered, and she could say it, and it was really, it just, um, it made me excited to have people making more. Yeah. So I thought maybe we could even buy some like beaver, bear, whatever puppets to like have for checkout at the library mm -hmm. um, so that people could, if they wanted to make videos, we could have like a little, um, yeah, a little like with pouches or something, you could check them out. But they even have some that are, have the, they're not Tlingit, but they're Northwest Pacific Coast designs. Mm -hmm. Have you seen those? Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. And I just thought I'd throw it out there. If it's something you're interested in, let me know. We could get some for the library. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Because then we can set up a little stage. Because that's, that's really what we did when we made these puppet videos years ago, is we just put a table on top of a table. And we, they had some like going away party for someone. They had this really sparkly, fun looking um, tablecloth. So we put that over the top of it. And so we can certainly just, you know, I say let's just make lots of stuff. And so puppet videos, uh, I was, I got an email today from someone at KTOO and they're interested in doing sort of a regular Clinket language something, uh, I think, which could develop, you know, 
And but then I tried to put the. I was like, well, you guys should hire a position that, that does this, <laughs> because you're in clinky country. I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal, is that we've got people in all different in all these different industries who work in the language in those industries. Um, and then I've been in talks with, uh, uh, in November, um, uh, Princess Lukai is coming down here, and she's an uh, artist, actor, director, writer, uh, performer who lives in Fairbanks, and she's been working on this TV show called Molly of Denali, which is going to be a PBS show about, a, it's sort of like, kind of a Dora the Explorer type of thing, but she's Alaska Native and she goes to different communities. So one session is going to be in Sitka, one show is probably going to be in Juneau. And so uh, it's really exciting. And, and we were talking about eventually developing an Alaska Native language media network mm -hmm. so that you would have a lot of that capability maybe centralized and they would go and make f these films in different areas so that we all, you know, and then maybe it gets big enough that we've got someone here full time who just does that media type of stuff. Because um, another thing that we did is we did a word of the week program I did years ago. I haven't done anything with it yet, but I'm gonna. Uh, where we picked a word, I, I just picked these 52 words I felt were like really important in, in Klingon. And then went to about seven different elders and had them record, just come up with sentences for each word. And so the idea would be like yesh, and then you'd have like nich benegut yesh would be Monday, Tuesday you'd have um, you know something else about re and so it's a big project, but I think that could also go forward too, where there could be kind of a web presence and kind of a um, radio. There's there's lots of things that we could be doing. Um, Working with the Facebook team, trying to clink it on Facebook like they did with the Nupiak. So there's there's fun stuff uh, going on. Yeah, local and regional marine forecasts, absolutely. We share all this stuff. Top secret information, all the best berry patches. Because we're not going to translate this stuff. So we like, and then wouldn't that? That's. I mean, I want to create like a community that's like that, because then there, there's something that you gain. Yeah, you know, we all know we're going to gain stuff from it, but we also have to sort of create those other sort of gains, right? Say, uh, and some people get a little upset with me. They say, "Well, I don't like being exclusive." I was like, "I'm not being exclusive. I'm saying get in here, everybody, because this is where the best stuff is, right?" And so. Um, yeah, I'm down for ideas like that. I'm always down. Okay. Uh, so let's... Oh, go ahead. Um, another thing, like uh, curriculum developers could produce really quickly. Um, when kids learn to read, so if kids are learning to read in Klingit, um, in kindergarten and preschool, they start with pattern books. They're called pattern books. They're really easy. Like a person could sit down probably in two months and produce 40 of the things. And they're things like pure patterns, all in Tlingit. So, das away, a hidi away, das away, kit away. And it just goes question and answer or something really predictable, like stigedi khatin, kit khatin. And it can be done mostly with photographs. And if you have, like you can produce, 20 or 40 of those things, and um, all uh, only. <laughs> and that's what they're using in schools now to teach kids how to read in English. And it doesn't have to be translated, it could be just Tlingit. And then uh, that's a, a start to kids learning to read in Tlingit. And, um, and from there, you build up those reading skills. Some kids will pick up reading right away, but uh, most of the kids are going to need lots of those patterns. Okay. Sheesh. Let's do that, too. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, so th as we think about things we could do in this class, like let's make things that get you credit for, you know, the college class, but then let's also make things that are going to fulfill a need, and let's figure out how to get those things out there. Free on the Internet, 
and minimal cost so that we can have them printed as well. Uh, love the idea. Also love that, you know, if we could get a little bit more coordinated so that we're not recreating things that are already done, uh, there's, but we can sort of refresh some things. That little readings in Clinkit, that book is so fabulous. Uh, but I think we should make it again, right, and just update it uh, and just give everything sort of a fresh look. And, and they talked about that. You know, I looked at the old books they had in Hawaii where they just put a sticky note on it and they just wrote the Hawaiian. And that's how they started. But now they've got slick books, really nice books. And it's also when you open it, you're like, hey, that's Hawaiian people. And not that it has to be only Tlingit people, but it should look like Southeast Alaska. It should look like Tlingit Ani and, and our, you know, Dakakau. It should look like our homeland. And, you know, because when I had kids, I was like, I'm sick of the chickens and the cows and the pigs. <laughs> Enough. But, and then also just these sort of repeated storylines that you t typically get in children's literature so that we can have some and we can have little stories. Uh, and I, I really want to have multiple series. So we have, we made one where it's just these two kids who speak Clinket and they just go do stuff with their family. That's it. It doesn't have to be these huge story arcs. So, uh, yeah, and translate Far Side and other cartoons. <laughs> Dauenhauer has secured permission from Charles Schultz himself to translate any Peanuts comics that they want <laughs> and get. So oh, that's they have. Cool. I shared one the other day. I don't know what I did with it. Um, I saw if we wanted to do like a Tlingit children's book or a graphic novel, but we're not Tlingit, but we're not going to do something that's cultural property, like a story that has to do with some of the oral traditions. If it was just like you were saying, something totally, you know, is that something that is okay, or would that be kind yeah, of? Yeah, I think that's absolutely okay. I mean. If it's a clan-owned story, oh, no. <laughs> anything you do, there'll be some pushback and there'll be some people who will get grumpy. But I think that's a pretty small voice at this point. Um, but not even to sell or anything, but just like the stuff that we're doing for class and posting online for free. Yeah, let's do it. I'm all for it. And then we'll, we'll fix things that need fixing and we'll do the best of our ability and we'll, we'll put it out there. Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, Charlie Tsakwat says, Telephone Hede Idukh. How do we translate that? It's the telephone. Hede. The mouth. What about idukh? Do we know that one? I is like you, right? Yeah, you. Uh, to someone. So you are being chucht. By someone. Someone's calling you. It's good. Yeah, we're we're putting it together, but we also have oh, like resources. Well, phone is talking to you. Calling <laughs> you. To summon, right? So chuch is to like. To call someone over. I'm going to close that. You're being summoned to the telephone. Telephone day, right? You're going to go. That's how you would say the phone call. The phone is for you, right? You are being summoned to the mouth of the telephone. <laughs> he says, Nana E wave. Nana E is kind of a. Anyone got a translation for that? I know some of you have heard it. You die? Yeah, it's kind of, you know, like uh, piss off. <laughs> but, like, it's literally probably like, you know, death, right? It's, but, I, you know, that's what I had heard. Uh, I would be curious what elders would say. How would you say nanae in English? <laughs> um, F off is probably a pretty <laughs> good, you know. Uh, Wait, it's nice. um, I heard it nana e ne. Yeah, so nana e ne or nana e na. And so nana e is um, 
the theory that I heard is that it does mean go die. And then nana i na is like go die here. Here's the death. Go take it. Right? So it, it probably doesn't like literally mean that sort of like when you say in English like F U. Uh, it's not like a, it's it's just become this sort of thing. So yeah, so you know, it's I heard people say you can't cuss and think it. I was like, that's not true. <laughs> it's just different. It just works differently. Okay. Do in kananik bizi chatsati. Tell them I'm busy. Tell when. Tell tell him or her I'm busy. And you could also say I'm doing important things. I'm that's another way to say I'm busy. Do in kakonik ita. I'll tell them you're sleeping. I will tell them you're sleeping. Taha bizik kushayek. Sleep you see, it is busy. Yeah, sleep you see. It's uh, it's being busy, right? And so sleeping is being busy. There's, there's different ways we could sort of interpret that. But that's a good... Dasa? Does that mean literal, translate literally to like sleep was made repeatedly? So let's go look up yech and see what we find. So we know yech is to make or to use something. Uh, and then so we sort of see some different options here. Um, is that an Ariel followed by the class of, uh, by the uh, classifier? Yeah, so the the one thing that we see when we have the shayech verb. If there's some noun before it that has this underline X locative, it means you're using that for the thing, right? Or it, it gets a little tricky, right? So you say, He made a chair. Or you say, He used the rock for a chair. So that's the first kind of hint when we have this bizich, kushayich, and we've got the repetitive suffix on the end. So let's see if we could find a kushayich, maybe in uh, in Jeff Lear's verb notes. We might find something different here. So if we go down and we look for uh, yich to make. You don't really have the k, and this is another area that gets kind of, I think, a little tricky. Is it's hard sometimes to figure out whether the k is the aerial or is uh, people, right? You don't really see an example similar. So in the absence of having uh, who probably wrote this, I would say one theory is people use sleep is something that keeps people busy, maybe. Um, but that's a good question. I have to run that by some folks. Busy sleeping, yeah. Sleep is being busy. Sleep is being busy, right? It's it's a it's a busy thing. Sleeping, I don't know. I'll see if uh, I'll bring it to Marge and see what she thinks. Okay, let's run through a, a couple things. So there's there's a number of things I thought we could also do. Um, I know we had started last week to look at. Just walking through a Raven story and just looking at some things that uh, 
we might see in the story. Uh, I also have a set of uh, just adjectives and adverbs. These are kind of fun to just practice and to, you know, there's lots of them. They can, they can enrich your language use by just sort of learning how to use these. Um, well, we have about 15 minutes. Uh, but one thing I, I do want us to think about is, so then we'll have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, class again on Monday. So for Monday, let's try and pick maybe a couple of different things that we might talk about, right? So we, we've got a pretty good growing list of things, but I would like you to maybe share one thing that happened to you in between now and then, or just one little short sort of snippet, something you can share with us. Uh, I think food is always a good thing, like putting up food, going for food. Uh, people like talking about food. Like I remember we were putting up, when we'd go put up fish with my auntie um, Marilyn, like we were working on food and then we would be eating like dinner and we'd be talking about what we're going to have for breakfast. So it's like it was very food centered. So, you know, what kinds of things uh, do you enjoy making, eating, sharing, those types of things? Uh, and let's just start with that. So we've got like, and if you if feel like you're hitting a wall with some of those things, think about like travel. Places you went, places you'd like to go, things you'd like to see. Um, for the food, which I'm also um, obsessed unhealthily about food, <laughs> um, do is there anywhere where they just have a list? I, I know, like um, Beginning Clinket um, Handbook has a lot of the um, traditional foods, um, but things like, like has anyone come up with words for like pizza or? chicken casserole or you know what I'm saying like yeah. just like a place where we have some of that language I know that there's one that has all those words from the kitchen like the stove and all of that but just a list of like how you say all the food stuff that's maybe not as traditional yeah and so this is you know we don't really have a words committee <laughs> we should certainly be keeping a list of things that we would like to come up with a name for uh, and then we'll sort of, we'll come up with one, and then if someone has a better one, we'll switch to that one. Because I know, I uh, got together with Qanak um, a while ago, and we were like, we rode the elevator, and we're like, what's elevator? We looked at the electrical, you know, I was plugging in my computer, I was like, what's this thing? What are we going to call this thing? Uh, there's still not a name for a map. We were kind of talking about that last night, and I was like, what are we going to call that thing? So... We have to become more sort of efficient, I think, about coming up with names for things. Um, and sometimes, you know, we I think we came up with like and then we're like, let's just call it kashuk, right? Let's just so sometimes it gets really long, and maybe you gotta sort of rethink it. Uh, but, you know, in Hawaii, they've, they've got an actual committee that, that deals with that stuff. And I'm sure you guys have things that you've worked out. So if you have new words, share them. And let's, uh, you know, I, I've been trying to work on this dictionary that's kind of a little bit easier than in the past to, to keep an updated version of so that we can just come up with a word and just put it in there. Not to try and take control of anything, but just say, let's just come up with a process. And then, it, you know, we we're in Shitka, and we came up with, I think, three different words for mayonnaise. I was like, all right, well, let's just use them all. <laughs> <laughs> I preferred plate ka echi, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I think we came up with two or three different words for jarred fish. So, oh, yeah. you know, if it to khat uchu was the most straightforward, um, but some people like guka for a mason jar, some people like it uh so let's just let's make sure we've got some time to do that as well if you're running into things that you wish there was a name for we could try to cook it up here like pizza, Get it. pizza. uh and then if we can't then we'll um 
we'll try and take it to some elders. And those of you who have access to elders, we might give you some fun tasks as well. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts? I think we should do, I think we got time to do the adjective list. Maybe we'll do that next week. Honey, uh, I just wanted to talk a bit about listening again. Eh? Uh, and, uh, I was listening to that uh, Susie James story probably six or seven or eight times and uh, trying to pick out what she was saying there. And I basically found myself just listening for verbs. Eh? Is If I can get the verbs, then I have an idea of what she's uh, talking about. But... I think uh, I'll just throw this out there, and I, I don't I don't know if you'd want to do this every time or once in a while, but um, before we listen to something, maybe give us an overview of what it's about, eh? and then that way I know what to listen for, or kind of I've got some kind of context. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at that, but I, I just find going in blind like that, I know it's about Raven and an uncle or something, but I really have no idea after that, hey? Except what I can pick out. So anyways, uh, uh, ooch, yeah. Oh, yeah, quite tea. that's a great idea. So yeah, just sort of front load, put some seeds in there about what, what you're gonna encounter. Uh, and Susie, Susie James is a, she's a, it's as hard as it gets basically. Uh, but it's really fun too, and so I was just, probably spent a hundred hours with her, you know, in the past year. Or so this has just been stuff on my mind, but we'll certainly bring other things in here that are just sort of a different pace. And maybe we'll find some things too, that uh, there's, there's not a translation that's totally written down for it yet. And it doesn't always have to be Raven stories. It could be other things too, or if you have particular recordings that you want us to listen to, and we're not gonna get through the whole thing, but we can certainly, um, get into it. Uh, I was talking with Jock, uh, Alice Taff, and she's got a bunch of these recordings that are just conversations that haven't been transcribed yet. And we can look at some of those. I think she would give us access to those videos and we can work on them right here. And, and, and you know, that we are reaching this point with the Clinkit language where we are running a little low on folks that we can run and ask for help. So it, it is good to do this work so we can figure out where our blank spots are and figure out how we can sort of collectively make sure those are covered you know because we're in this we're in this shift and we've been in this shift for for you know a long time now but in particular i would say the last decade i've seen just such a dramatic reduction in the amount of people you can go to with some of these tougher questions uh, who could just sort of come right out and, and translate this stuff or say these things that are using these really grammatically complex concepts. Um, yeah, yeke, yekwati. Let's see. So I think we read this. I think that's where we left off. All right, so he's murdering these kids. Anybody want to read this sentence here? Kayu dach yik de akau kai oe kladu kak de de ak kla ashjak. Okay. So we see the, the translation here. Uh, what Are there any things that we're not familiar with? Uh, clay, then, right? You dog. Do we know what dog is? Unfinished dugout canoe. Yep. It's an unfinished dugout canoe. Yikde, going inside of some kind of shallow container. A cow ye. Are you familiar with that verb? 
is that um, like sending somebody on a, like a, to do something, like an errand, or they have to do it? Yeah, it's giving a command. It's ordering someone to do something. It's related to saying. So we've got yawaqa, he or she said it. A yawsiqa, he or she said it to him or her. And then you've got kawaqa, he or she sent them on a mission, an errand, gave them a job. Okay? Awe, uh, clay. So we see the then are sort of their stacking up here. Uh, Dukha, and this this would be kadakh. But when we get the ka in front of it, it causes this first part to contract. This is very common. You're gonna see this, you know. So you could say, yet a adikshahitiya. It's good the way that he or she is writing it. Yak a adik shahitiya. The k gets just the ka can collapse. It's it happens if there's a vowel right before the verb. Uh, and then we get so we're gonna look for kadakh. Uh, uh, is the verb root there, and that might be one that we've got to kind of go dig around for. We... I don't see it there, so we'll go into Lear and see if he has it. Which I don't think it goes all the way down to the underline. Pinched X. Oh, If you can't find a verb, you can also go into the stem lists, also by Lear, and go see if you could find the verb root, at least. So we get on here, underline X. I don't see it. It means to to bite on something. Where did I find this? I know I found it somewhere too. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Okay, well, I'll look for it. I know I found it before. But it's to, you know, to, to bite over something, uh, and that's where you're getting the clenching. Tle, ash, jach. So jach is to repeatedly kill. Uh, what is the ash part before it? Anybody know what that is? It's the person who they were just talking about. Yeah, so this is a pronoun that we haven't probably used a whole lot. Uh, it means this sort of main character or these people that we're talking about. So the ush is going to pop up a lot in storytelling if you have whoever that main character is, right? So if I'm telling you about uh, my auntie, then whenever I'm talking about her doing something, I could always say ush and, 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 you know, as the pronoun. It means that person we've been talking about. Okay, anybody want to read the next one? Wait, you clock, yep, yep, he away, yay, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so, way is that? Do clock his, his sisters, yetki, children, away, and then yay, I don't and so ye adene is just like he's he does this. It could mean he's doing it right now, but it also means he does this. So when we sort of put these things together, he does that to her children. Right? So there's some some things like, you know, English requires this to part, and Clinkit doesn't always require something that direct, right? They do dlock yetki away ye adene. He does that to them.
Do I want to read that line? You rest, you rest, you cake, okay. And there's usually two A's on the end of that. She says it pretty short. You rest, you cake. That's the name of her brother. He's, it's also in lots of versions of this story. They say that's the moon. Uh, so you would as we sort of pull this name apart, and there's quite a few names we could do this to, you would be that way over there. Kiss comes from keys, uh, the tide. Kukek uh, comes from this verb we saw up here, akawakayi, or akawaka. So it means to command, the tide commander. As in, so uh, the you is actually not that over there. It's connected to this A on the end, like you do a sock, or ye do a sock. So there's certain repetitive forms where you're going to get the U and then a K at the end. Uh, you're going to see that you knick. He's he tells this, right, or she tells this, right, on a regular basis. Okay, any questions? Yeah, so the key thing is, I, I think we get 90 minutes twice a week. And so I make sure that that 90 minutes is feeling productive for you. So, you know, if, if you want to chime in and say, you know, walking through these stories is good, but maybe we need to do something else, let's do something else. And so we'll, we'll come up with some things. I've got things that we can sort of go over. Verb conjugations, uh, adverbs, adjectives classifier stuff, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff, and if we want to sort of spend some time going over some of that stuff, because it helps to go over it again and again, let's do that. If we want to keep looking at this story, let's do that. If we want to try and get one of these conversations from uh, Alice Taff and, and work on one of those, let's do that. If we want to collectively, while we're here, make a little kid's book, let's do that. I mean, there's, it's our time. And so I want to make sure that we're, if we could spend the first 45 minutes like just fully and think it, that'd be great. Then we could do whatever we want for the next 45 minutes. But, uh, you know, we're, fall, it takes a little while, I think, to get a rhythm because you spend the summer just doing all kinds of stuff. And it's like, oh yeah, think it, right? And so, uh, and for some of us, we're, we're just doing it all the time. So, uh, but anyways, feel free to send me, you know, use the chat room speak up, send me an email, whatever kinds of things you think will help, those are the things that we'll try and do. Okay? You okay? Good cheese. Good cheese.